Dorothy May Leach was born on November 3, 1938, to Thomas and Annie Wheeler, who were the original settlers of Barkholden, Queensland. She has three siblings, Herb, Beryl and Lorraine. I was um, born many years after the others. My brother was 18 years older than me and my elder sister was 16 and my other sister was eight. So I really grew up as an only child um, to um, elderly parents, but I don't feel I missed out on anything. Mum had helped with everything that I was doing and everything, you know, with school and, and so forth. And my dear dad was a great father. I lost him when I was 18 and um, I felt that deeply uh, because I think when you're in your 20s and 30s, you need your parents around. I'd say we were a very close family. In those days, you couldn't just hop in a car and go and visit like they do today. To go and visit my grandmother in Clermont, we had to get in the train in, um, at Bar Calden in the morning, say about eight o'clock, and then you'd go through to Emerald, after many hours on a slow goods train and thing, and then you'd have to go and change and get another train to go out to Clermont. So it was quite a little bit of an ordeal, but it was always worth it. Dorothy went to school at Barcolden State School and had plenty of great friends and she got along well with everyone. Dorothy says she would have loved to have had a secondary education, but she never got the chance. Us ordinary people, we, d we didn't get secondary education unless your parents had money and then a couple out of the class would get sent away to boarding school, but the rest of us didn't and that, and the nuns knew I didn't have a job. And so they said, oh, Dorothy, would you like to come and, and clean at the, at the convent for us? I very eagerly said yes, but it was hard work. I had to get on hands and knees and polish boards and everything like that. But anyway, I enjoyed it. Dorothy also loved to decorate cakes. Although she makes her dislike for mud cakes very clear, she travelled all over Australia cake decorating and still to this day enjoys doing it. I always admired cake decorating uh, and I thought people must be very clever to do it and talented. And then one time in the newspaper there was an advertisement for learning cake decorating through what was then adult education. And so I applied and I joined and wonderful teacher, wonderful teacher, and the ladies were all wonderful. And uh, I just started from there. And then people knew I was doing it, so they'd ring you up to do a cake and that. And then um, after a few years, they started to have seminars in Brisbane. And I was very keen, I'd go down there for the weekend. And then there was uh, national seminars and I went to, I've been to Adelaide, Sydney, Canberra, Hobart, Brisbane, and, and that, and the seminars. And you can have the top cake decorators in Australia sitting next to you in a lecture, and we're just the same. They'll ask questions that you probably thought, oh, I can't ask that. But they're always learning too. And, and um, I got a lot of enjoyment from, from cake decorating and everything. When she was living in Barcolden, she met her husband, Gordon Leach. Gordon had moved into Barcolden doing railway work for Queensland Rail, and they hit it off right away. I had a wonderful husband. We got um, 52 years and four months of marriage. And um, when we were married for 50 years, during the celebrations, he produced a certificate. My daughter had got it done and he was putting me on permanent. I had, I had done my apprenticeship for 50 years and he was keeping me on. So I don't think anyone else has ever had an apprenticeship for 50 years. And because I was going away to have surgery in two weeks, and I wasn't going to be able to be doing something for six weeks, I said to the guests, can you go on strike if you're permanent? They said, oh yes, yes, 
oh, I'm on strike, Gordon, I said. So, <laughs> and um, he, he was a wonderful husband, a wonderful father, and a, a great person. He was very um, um, helpful to everyone. Dorothy has spent the majority of her life doing volunteer work for school tuck shops, the blood bank, Red Cross Committee, Girl Guides, Mercy Associates and Crime Stoppers. One day Gordon used to be a volunteer in policing and, and everything and he came home one day and he said, um, oh, we're members of the Crime Stoppers. Oh, he said, are we? He said, yes. He said, we both joined love. I said, thank you, Gordon. So anyway, we're, I'm still a member and I have a house in Rockhampton that my cousin left me and it's near Archer Park Rail Museum and Gordon used to smell the coal burning for the steam train there and he said I must go over there one day Dorothy he said and that that's coal because when he joined the railway they're all coal engines and um, he came home and threw the receipt on the table and said we're members and he didn't leave, live long enough to become a life member, but I am a life member up there. And um, then uh, um, we, we had lots of fun with Crime Stoppers and things like that. It was a great committee. One day I saw in the paper where um, they needed volunteering and policing people. And so I said, Gordon, why don't you ring up and see about that. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, I came home from Blood Bank the next time. He said, oh, darling, I rang up the police station and I've got to go for an interview. He said, I've, they want me, they, you know. And so that started Gordon's journey with um, volunteering and policing. And they, um, it was about three or four men, and they used to go around the supermarkets and everything, and they used to see if the cars were locked and everything, and put the little notices on and say they were good or they were bad or something. And uh, he got a lot of enjoyment out of that. And uh, then he used to go into court and help the prosecutor. And I didn't know this until his funeral, but, um, the prosecutor that was doing the eulogy said um, that if they were having a bad day at court and then Gordon would snore, that just brought the, back to an even level. So, But he never ever told me he, snore, he went to sleep in court. Then when he died and that the police were just, they were just so wonderful to me. They helped me in lots of ways by company and things like that. and. Uh, Oh, I could never thank them enough, really. And then after a couple of years, I said to the lady who was in charge of them, Vicky, I think I'd like to be a volunteer in policing. And she was very pleased. So I applied and did the training. And so I'm doing that now. And uh, I go to court with the prosecutor on a Tuesday. Overall, Dorothy believes she has had the most amazing life. She states that she wouldn't trade it for the world. The council named a, um, a road after my husband and it leads to the um, boat ramp over there near the power station. Yes. Yes. And um, when I'm going to Rocky or anywhere uh, past there, I always ask him to protect me on the road and that. And when I come home, I thank him for doing it. But the funny thing about that road over there leading to the boat ramp is he used to get seasick. He would get seasick in the bath just about. But the road leads to the ocean and to the boat ramp. And I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs>